I'm Shannon Lazinski, Director of Patient Services at the Cordoma Foundation. I'm very happy to welcome all of you to the 2023 International Cordoma Community Conference. This is our sixth international community conference, and it's our 16th conference overall. We have so many now that I couldn't, I couldn't fit all the pictures on the slide, but we have a number of them. And each one feels just as exciting as the last because we get to see all of you and share all of the new and exciting things happening in the world of Cordoma. We're excited to be here and glad to be back in Boston. And I want to give uh, many thanks to our sponsors, Mass General Cancer Center, Brown Neurosurgery, and Northwestern Medicine, three centers where you can find expert, state-of-the-art Cordoma care. And so thanks so much to them for helping make it possible for us to be here today. And just a few notes before we get started. Um, I want to note that the meeting is being live streamed and recorded. So hello and welcome to all our live stream viewers, one of whom is probably my mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> uh, in your folders, you'll find two cards um, that you can use to write down questions for the Ask the Experts session that's happening later this morning. Um, write your questions on there and uh, then hand those to me during the break so we can make sure um, they get to the moderator. There are also evaluation forms in your folders. We really love your feedback on these sessions, so if you can um, turn those into the registration or uh, the resource table uh, throughout the day, that would be great, and then a general evaluation at the end of the day. Um, and please don't hesitate to let us know if you need anything throughout the day. Staff is around to help. And speaking of staff, it takes a village to host this conference, and everybody has just been so wonderful and so Many thanks to everybody on the CF team, and in particular, Kimberly, who has worked tirelessly on planning this event. I don't even know if she's in this room to hear me say that, but woohoo, Kimberly! <laughs> I'll make sure she knows that was for her. So whether this is your first time at a community conference, your third time, or maybe even your 16th time, my goals for you today are for you to leave here feeling informed, inspired, invested, and connected. Informed about what research is happening now, where it's headed in the future, and how you can be part of that. What treatment options are available to you should you need treatment again in the future. How to find care for ongoing side effects and challenges so you can live your best life. And how to become more deeply involved in the work, uh, in the fight against Cordoma. And I want you to feel inspired to have hope for the future due to the incredible progress that's been made, which continues to accelerate, and inspired to face whatever comes your way with strength, courage, and perseverance, like so many already of you already do every day. I want you to feel invested in the progress that's being made, because we've only come this far thanks to how invested all of you already are in changing the future of Cordoma. As peer guides, fundraisers, donors, and just by supporting and encouraging each other, you make a huge difference in this fight, and we hope you'll continue with your part in it. And finally, connected with the foundation so we can continue to support you and you can stay up to date on what's happening in Cordoma research and treatment and continue to be involved with and support that work and connected with each other because the dedication and care you all show in helping each other along this journey is really unparalleled. So to help us achieve those goals, I want to share some helpful tips for making the most of the day from conference veterans who've done this many times. Um, it's a good idea to take notes. There's a lot of information that will be shared today. Definitely ask questions during all of the Q&A sessions that we'll have during, after most of the sessions. Take breaks when you need them. And please ask a staff member about quiet places if you just really need to step back for a minute. Visit the resource table out in the foyer. Definitely make friends. And to stay in touch with those new friends, uh, make sure that you're signed up for Cordoma Connections, our online community, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. So the main thing I want to talk with you about this morning is the progress that's been made on our Cordoma Survivorship Initiative, which is very exciting. But first, let's talk about the term survivorship. What does it mean? Survivorship refers to the health and well-being of someone with cancer, and this includes all aspects of life, including physical, mental, emotional, social, and financial. And because the time period of survivorship uh, is usually defined as beginning when someone is diagnosed with cancer, 
symptoms of the cancer and side effects of treatment are included, but we're definitely talking about when treatment ends. So for example, what kind of follow-up care? Uh, do you need how to handle side effects after treatment? How to monitor for recurrences and other health issues? And anything else that can affect your quality of life? And we all know that the Cancer Survivor Support Network is uh, friends and family are an important part of a cancer journey. And a really cool thing about cancer survivorship is that it includes those people uh, and what they're experiencing too. And at the foundation, we often refer to this network as co-survivors. So chordoma, as you know, is somewhat of a unique kind of cancer. And we feel that chordoma survivorship is really no different. Over the years, it had become more and more apparent to us that there was a gap in information and resources specific to the types of side effects and challenges that chordoma patients and survivors face after diagnosis. So in 2020, we launched uh, a five-year initiative to focus specifically on chordoma survivorship. In order to expand what's available to you in the form of information, resources, and support to help you with the quality of life challenges you might be experiencing. So what does quality of life mean? This is a question we get sometimes. One way it can be defined is the degree to which an individual is healthy, comfortable, and able to participate in or enjoy life events. Essentially, it's the overall enjoyment of life, and that's what we want to help improve. And that leads to the second purpose of the initiative, which is to help you get the best care possible for whatever you're experiencing so you can live your best life. So to start us out on the right foot, we wanted to hear directly from you about the quality of life challenges you're facing. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> so between August 2020 and September 2021, we conducted a survey to learn about what you're experiencing. We surveyed patients and survivors, as well as caregivers and co-survivors. And last year, we partnered with Dr. Raj Mukherjee's team at Johns Hopkins to formally analyze and write up the results of the survey, which resulted in two papers. One focused on chordoma survivors and the other on co-survivors. The co-survivors paper was recently published in the journal World Neurosurgery, and you have a copy of that paper in your folders. Um, the other has been submitted for publication, and we hope to see it published soon. The survey received just over 850 responses, which gave us a ton of great information that we learned so much from. And the information has not only helped us to be able to more fully meet your needs, but we hope that clinicians will also learn from these papers to help inform the care they provide to you. So what did we learn? First, we learned about the challenges you're facing in three categories, physical, emotional and cognitive, and practical and social. Much of what we found was expected after working closely with many of you through our patient navigation service, but it was very helpful to have things quantified. So these graphs, uh, these graphs include responses from patients and survivors. They're all together, um, and, but you can see a more, breakdown, a more detailed breakdown on the website uh, by tumor location to help understand, uh, a, get a better picture. And similarly, we asked caregivers and co-survivors about the same emotional, cognitive, practical, and social challenges to get a better picture of their experiences. A, a critical part of this survey, and something that to our knowledge had not been done before, was to find out not just what you're experiencing, but whether you're getting adequate care and assistance for what you're experiencing. So these charts show whether that's happening for patients and survivors. The orange segments are how many people said that care was available, it was accessed, and it met their needs. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the majority of you are not getting that help that meets your needs. And that is actually not unique to chordoma, but is a common trend among all cancer survivors. It may be more pronounced for chordoma survivors in some ways because so many of you travel for treatment and therefore don't always have an oncology team at home making it more difficult to find coordinated comprehensive treatment for side effects. So these charts are also on the website along with the charts for uh, caregivers and co-survivors that had similar responses. So what have we done with what we learned? The goal we set out to accomplish was to create information, support, and resources to help you with whatever you're experiencing at any point in your journey so you can get the right assistance and care. In the last few years, we've developed in-depth information to help you learn about the most common side effects and quality of life issues indicated by the survey results. Information on all of the topics that you see here is now available 
on our brand new shiny website in multiple languages. And the booklets shown on the left are all available in print out at the resource table. So if you haven't stopped by to pick those up, please do. Um, our online community, Cordoma Connections, is a great resource for information and to talk with others in the community about their experiences with Cordoma. We recently moved the community to a new platform that has some really great features, including a member directory, which uh, is where you'll find this, this map. Um, and that way you can see people all over the world, wherever they're located. You might find somebody in your, in your town or city. Um, the map's interactive, so you can zoom in closer to see member cities if they've chosen to share that information, and then click into a profile and connect with someone directly. There's also a private messaging feature that works much like texting or chat in social media apps, so you can easily message other members directly. And a very exciting part of this new platform um, is that in the next few weeks there will be a mobile app available so that you can easily participate in the community from anywhere on your phone or tablet. If you're not a member of Connections yet or you haven't activated your account on the new platform, you can do that while you're here at the conference if you'd like. Um, just visit the resource table and someone will help you with that. And those at home can visit cordoma-connections.org. And much like the amazing groups that exist on Facebook, the way that you all support and guide each other in Connections is truly invaluable. And we want to help support that and make that as easy as possible. As part of the survivorship initiative, we've also launched monthly virtual support groups. And I'm happy to say that three of the group leaders, Jennifer Byers, Megan Whetstone, and Caitlin Slepian, are here with us today to lead the support sessions this afternoon. The, the online groups are an excellent place for people to come together. You can see each other's faces on video while sharing information and support. Um, in the groups, we talk about everything from the emotional weight of Cordoma to managing daily challenges of living with this disease. Um, we've also greatly expanded the peer guide program. This program matches you one-on-one -on -one with someone who's been through a similar journey with Cordoma, who can then be a source of support for you throughout your journey for as long as you need. And uh, these are just a, f just a few of our amazing guides, um, a number of whom are here today. You can sign up for the next group meeting or request to be matched with a peer guide on the website. And uh, to help you find care for quality of life challenges, a resource we created as part of the survivorship initiative is a directory uh, of doctors and specialists who address the side effects Cordoma survivors commonly experience. It's called the Survivorship Specialist Directory, and it can be found within Cordoma Connections. It's different from the doctor directory, which is on our website. The doctor directory includes surgeons, radiation oncologists, and medical oncologists only who meet certain criteria related to their experience with Cordoma. The specialist and the specialist directory have been submitted by members of Cordoma Connections. Any member can submit the name of a healthcare provider who's treated them for something related to Cordoma. You can see the different specialties listed there on the left, and um, contact details are available once you click into a provider. So head to Cordoma Connections and take a look if you haven't, um, if you haven't seen that yet. And if you haven't submitted the names of specialists who've treated you, please do in case that might help someone else. Um, there's a form right on the specialist directory page in Connections where you can um, easily submit your doctor's information. And as always, our patient navigators are here as a resource for you at any point in your journey, including providing information and support around any ongoing challenges related to quality of life. Many of you know Andrea Locke, one of our navigators. She also manages the peer guide program and is the community manager for Cordoma Connections. And then Kimberly DeHasseth, queen of conference planning, is the newest member of our navigation team. And her, her main focus in navigation is supporting patients outside the US. They are wonderful, helpful people who are so passionate about and dedicated to their work and to all of you and are here to help you in any way they can. So don't hesitate to reach out to them at any time. And as we wrap up talking about the survivorship initiative, let me say again how important it is to us for you to know that once you've been given the life-altering diagnosis of Cordoma, we're here to support you with anything and everything that comes next for as long as you need. 
we want to ensure that the survivorship resources will be available and helpful to you if and when you need them. If you have any feedback on our offerings and if there's something you need that we haven't addressed, please get in touch and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and before I go, I want to tell you a little bit about something coming up later this year. In a few minutes, you'll hear from Josh Summer, our executive director, and Dan Freed, our head of translational research and target discovery on how we're pushing Cordoma research and drug discovery forward. The progress they'll talk about means that more clinical trials for Cordoma are in our future. We heard a lot about that at the research workshop in the last couple days, and there's just so much exciting coming up. And in order for those clinical trials that are coming to be successful, we must ensure that they're designed and conducted with your needs and wants in mind as much as possible. So as with everything we do, we don't want to assume we know what's important to you, so we'll be asking you. Um, you'll hear from us later this year so we can find out what matters most to you and what you'd like to see in clinical trials for Cordoma. Even if you're not in a place where you need a clinical trial right now, your thoughts are still important to us and helpful. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>